Now, pouring your money into farmland probably sounds like a lot of work, sweat, heat, and risk of losing your crops. However, financial technology has facilitated access to opportunities in the interesting space for those who don't have the time or willingness to take care of the land itself. Now stick with me, let's talk about investing in farmland. Thank you so much for checking out our channel. If you aren't already subscribed, please simply click that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything and really helps us out big time. Anyway guys, let's get into what this video is all about and that is farmland investing. Let's first start out with what exactly farmland investing is. Farmland investing consists of buying land on which different types of crops, such as maybe corn, rice, soybeans, or even fruit, will grow, even though you will not be in charge of operating the land itself. Now, when I say operate, I mean taking care of the entire process of seeding and harvesting, something that a farmland investor doesn't necessarily have to do if he acts as a non-operator landlord. According to data from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the USDA, farmland investing has generated positive returns for the past 29 years, yielding at least an average of 11.5% per year to investors in the form of higher land value and rent or crop earnings. This return is remarkably similar to the historical performance of the S&P 500 index, which makes farmland quite an appealing financial asset. Now that you know more about what farmland investing is and how profitable it can be, let's take a look at five ways to invest in farmland for non-accredited investors. The first way non-accredited investors can invest in farmland is through Farm REITs, which stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. Now this is an investment vehicle through which investors can own a portion of one or several properties. These properties are owned by a single legal entity that in turn issues individual shares to investors, allowing them to get exposure to different segments of the real estate market, including farmland. One of the largest publicly traded farmland REITs is Farmland Partners. Now, the market capitalization of this REIT currently stands at 407 million, while the company's dividend yield is currently 1.59%. In the past five years, this REIT has generated an annual 6.8 CAGR to investors, not including its quarterly distributions. Meanwhile, another popular farmland REIT is the Gladstone Land Corporation, ticker symbol LAND, which currently has a market capitalization of 747 million while offering an annual yield of 2.15 percent to investors. Now, interestingly enough, the performance of this REIT has exploded since the pandemic with the land delivering an outstanding CAGR of 23.5% to investors in the past five years and a significant improvement in its performance since last year. Agricultural stocks are equity instruments issued by companies within the sector. Investors can buy these instruments as a way to indirectly bet on the positive performance of farmland operations in the United States as higher productivity and output volumes should lead to an improvement in the financial performance of these firms. Some examples of agricultural stocks would include Bayer AG, ticker symbol B-A-Y-R-Y, which produces fertilizers and pesticides to accelerate the growth and protect crops along with Bunge Limited, ticker symbol BG, which engages in the transportation of multiple agricultural commodities. Some ideas of industries operating in the farm sector include crop production, fertilizers and seeds, equipment, distribution and processing. Now let's move on. Rather than taking the risk of trying to pick the best individual agricultural stock, investors can get exposure to a wide range of different companies by investing in vehicles that hold a basket of stocks within the sector. Both exchange traded funds, ETFs and mutual funds offer this kind of exposures and they are popular vehicles among investors who prefer to take a more, you know, a more relaxed approach when investing in agriculture as they don't have to do the heavy lifting involved when selecting the most promising companies within the space. Investors can pick up an ETF that holds a basket of different agricultural commodities such as soybeans, wheat, and corn. Some examples of this kind of ETF include Invesco's DB Agriculture Fund, ticker symbol DBA, 
which does focus on buying soft commodities like corn and wheat, currently managing almost 900 million in assets on behalf of investors while charging a 0.94% annual fee. Investing in soft commodities is another way to get exposure to the agricultural industry in the US as you could buy a basket of different commodities such as corn, wheat, grains, and cocoa if you believe that the demand for these crops will evolve positively. Commodities can be bought separately through futures and options offered in the financial markets, or you could also buy them directly and take care of the storage if that is a convenient choice for you. Instead of relying on a third-party platform to invest in farmland, you could enroll in the adventure of buying farmland directly while hiring an operator by yourself to do the heavy lifting. Although that alternative might not be the most convenient for the majority of investors watching this video, some people who have some degree of knowledge or background in this space could take this road to save money in management fees. It's up to you. Now let's take a look at six ways to invest in farmland for accredited investors. An accredited investor is someone who meets one of the following criteria. You have a net worth of more than $1 million. Your annual income exceeds $200,000 or $300,000 if you are married. And you hold a Series 7, Series 65, or Series 82 license. Unfortunately, most platforms need you to meet one of these criteria to be eligible for investing in farmland. So if you just found out that you are an accredited investor, keep watching to know more about the available platforms through which you can invest in farmland. Even if you can't invest, stick with me so you can learn more about it. Farm Together is a Delaware-based investment platform through which accredited investors can get exposure to farmland by buying a portion of the properties in which the fund invests. The minimum investment required by Farm Together at the moment is $15,000 with absolute returns ranging from 7% to 13% per year and average cash yields of 3 to 9% per year. The company claims that adding farmland to a traditional portfolio of stocks and bonds tends to increase average returns by around 0.56% per year, while the standard deviation of the portfolio is reduced due to the inherently less volatile nature of land prices. You can check out our full Farm Together review on themodestwallet.com to learn more. I'll leave a link above and in the description if that is something that might interest you. AcreTrader is an Arkansas-based platform that enables farmland investing by establishing a separate limited liability company that owns the land while hiring an operator to exploit the soil. Investors are allowed to purchase shares of that LLC. A share represents one-tenth of an acre, which means that you'll need 10 shares to own an entire acre of the property. The process of investing in farmland is facilitated by allowing investors to complete the transaction 100% online. Operators pay the farm rent and cash, and that becomes a fixed income for the farmland investor, while the value of the land can also increase over time you know, to generate those capital gains. The expected cash yield produced by the farmland picked by AcreTrader ranges from about 3 to 5%. Meanwhile, the expected total annual return can range from 7 to 9%. The minimum investment required is $15,000 to access the firm's crowdfunded portfolios. You can check out our full review of AcreTrader on the ModestWallet.com blog. I'll also leave a, lo a link above and in the description below. Farmland LP is a company headquartered in San Francisco, California. It has been offering access to opportunities in the farmland space to investors for 12 years now. They reportedly manage more than $175 million in assets on behalf of clients. Most of the company's 15,000 acres of farmland are located in Northern California, Oregon, and Washington, and their screening process for selecting new properties involves the assessment of three key variables, sun exposure, soil quality, and access to water sources. Some of the crops planted in the properties managed by Farmland LP include wine grapes, blueberries, sweet corn, ryegrass, and peppermint. 
Now the fund claims to have delivered an average annual return of 11% for investors in the form of cash distributions and capital gains. The minimum investment required is 50,000. Farmland LP has extensive experience in managing farmland and has also delivered sizable returns for investors for an extended period. Its management team includes seasoned executives with dozens of years of experience in many areas that are relevant to the business, including financial management, biology, and investments. The annual management fee charged by Farmland LP Trust is 1.75%, and there is an incentive fee of 20% return after investors have received an initial 6% return on their investment. I know that sounds a little tricky. For example, if the land yields 15% return, Farmland LP will receive 1.8%, while investors will receive a net return of 13.2%. Moving on, Farm Funder is a Houston based investment platform that was founded by an industry insider currently managing over a hundred million in assets for clients while being recognized for its remarkable growth by the renowned Inc. magazine. The minimum amount required to invest in a farm funder project goes from anywhere between 10,000 and 100,000 depending on the property. Now bigger properties demand a higher investment and while investors make money a bit differently than usual since instead of land rent, they get crop profits along with any appreciation in the price of the land. Now Farm Funder's unique approach, which involves the distribution of crop profits, is particularly interesting as investors can benefit from an environment of higher commodity prices, such as the one we are seeing at the moment while there is also the possibility of realizing capital gains via higher land prices. Meanwhile, Brandon Silvera, the company's chief executive, is a fourth generation farmer who does hold a degree in agriculture. That is probably the kind of background one would, you know, like to see in the top executive of a firm that invests in farmland. Fee structures vary on a per deal basis for farm funder. In some cases, farm funder does not receive an annual management fee since instead they get an equity stake in the property. Meanwhile, there are other costs that the investor must cover on a pro-rate basis such as broker-dealer fees and the costs involved in developing and operating the farm. When farm funder does not take an equity stake in the property, annual management fees may range from 0.75% to 3% on the investment. Investors also have to pay an estimated 0.5% annual fee to an affiliate company called Farm and Land for operating the company. Founded in 2016 by former Naval officer Chris Raleigh, Harvest Returns has emerged as a well-reputable provider of farmland investment opportunities. Harvest Return raised 14 million in these past five years while distributing 1.8 million to investors who have, brought, who have bought a portion of one of the properties that comprise their portfolio. Harvest Returns specializes in productive farmland that caters to livestock, timber, and indoor agriculture, and the firm aims to be a passive income producing vehicle for their investors. This makes Harvest Returns kind of a niche farmland investing solution, as not every vehicle out there offers exposure to these particular crops. The minimum investment is quite low compared to other providers at $10,000, while certain deals are open for non-accredited investors. Harvest Returns is a low fee provider as the company does not charge an upfront fee or annual maintenance fee for the properties it manages. Harvest Returns manages to keep fees at zero for investors by passing on the costs resulting from the transaction to the sellers. Steward seeks to act as a bridge between farmers and investors by providing a marketplace. The company was founded by the co-founder of a well-known crowdfunding platform called Fundrise and we was officially launched in 2017. Make sure you check out our video we've done on Fundrise. I'll put a link up here. Since then, it has helped dozens of projects in getting funding through the Steward platform, which acts as a peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace that focuses specifically on farmland projects. This lending approach to investing in farmland might be more appealing to investors, you know, seeking a steady stream of fixed income rather than depending on the fluctuations in the price of farmland they would own when investing with other providers on this list. The minimum investment with Steward is perhaps the lowest within the group as investors can start lending with as little as $100. 
Interest rates typically range from 8 to 12 percent per year, while deals can go from 5,000 to 1 million, depending on the borrower's payment capacity, the size of the property, and other similar factors. In the past, Steward charged a flat 1 percent fee to investors, but the company has now fully shifted the cost of the service to lenders who are charged a 3 percent loan origination fee once the loan is approved. Now that was a lot of options for accredited and non-accredited investors. Let's take a look at the benefits of investing in farmland. Farmland investing has delivered solid gains for investors in the past 30 years or so while reducing a portfolio's risk amid the lower volatility displayed by the price of farmland during this period. There are multiple alternatives through which an accredited investor can get exposure to the attractive returns provided by farmland without having to get their hands dirty. Farmland investment vehicles offer both a stream of fixed income along with the possibility of generating capital gains through the progressive appreciation of land values. And finally, farmland is a limited resource and its demand will continue to grow over time as the global population continues to grow. As with all investments, there are some downsides. The minimum investment required by some of the providers listed in the, in, on this video is particularly high for retail investors. Unless otherwise stated, investors should consider farmland investments as an illiquid financial asset as it could take time to liquidate your holdings unless the platform you have chosen helps you finding a buyer. As with any other asset classes, there are no assurances that a certain investment won't go underwater, especially in the event of a natural disaster such as a flood or a prolonged drought and the fees charged by some providers are not as straightforward as most investors would like and they could eat a sizable proportion of future returns. I hope this video helps you in assessing this alternative asset class as you keep building a profitable portfolio of investments. The next step is to pick the provider you think fits your preferences the best. Now remember that certain providers only work with accredited investors while other vehicles are available for virtually any kind of investor. Be sure to check out our other videos on alternative investments and feel free to drop us a comment if you have any questions about what we just discussed. We'd love to hear from you, or maybe there are other alternative investments you'd like us to research. And don't forget to like this video if you found value and also subscribe to stay up to date on any new content we release here at The Modest Wallet. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.